Hey, welcome back everybody. I wanted to do a, a short video today. I wasn't really planning on doing a video, but I've, I've gotten um, quite a few questions on one subject. A while back, if you remember, I did a video that was a, a 305 versus a 350 video. What's the difference between those two engines? And it was a, it was a pretty popular subject, but overwhelmingly what I'm getting question-wise is what about the 327? What about the 283? Um, there is a little bit of confusion on the 327 engines, and I, I decided to do this because I just happened to have a 327 right here that I'm building for a friend of mine. And so I thought, ah, what the heck, let's, let's talk about it. So here's the thing. Now, there's more than one 327. Uh, there was a couple of different versions of that motor, and this... 327 that I have here is a 1969. Therefore, it is very similar to the 350. In fact, it's basically the same block as the 350 block. It has a four inch bore, but it has a shorter stroke. Um, the difference was the crankshaft and the rods, but here's the thing. You could take a 350 crank and rods and pistons, and they will bolt right into this block, and you have a 350. So literally, what GM did is they took the 327 block that they had in 1967, 68, and they actually would have been 68 and 69. They put a larger crankshaft in it or a longer stroke crank and they made a 350. So the first year for the 327 was 1962, but the 327s that you're going to find between 1962 and 1967 were different. They were not like this. They would not take a, a 350 crank. They had what they called a small journal crankshaft. The journal sizes, let's see I wrote it down here, uh, the small journal size on the mains for the small journal 327 was 2 inch 300 thousandths. The main journal size on the 68 and 69 327 was 2 inch 450 which is exactly the same main journal size as the 350 Chevy. Um, the rod size on the small journal 327, 62 to 67, was two inches. The rod journals were two inches in diameter. And of course, the 350 and the large journal 327 uh, rod journals are two inch 100 thousandths. So they were 100 thousandths bigger. Now, here's the thing. A lot of guys like the small journal cranks. and I would have to agree that the small journal diameter size is actually better for higher RPM. Now here's the thing, and here's why. So imagine a circle, you have a circle, you have a journal diameter. So the larger the diameter of that journal, the higher the surface speed between the bearing and the journal is going to be. The smaller the journal, the slower the surface speed is going to be. Imagine this circle is like a merry-go-round. So if you're on a merry-go-round and you're in the very middle of the merry-go-round, you're not really moving all that fast. You're basically just, you know, you're, you're going around with it, but you're not moving that fast. The further you get out away from the center of that merry-go-round, the faster you're actually moving. So there could be a guy standing in, in, the, in the center of the merry-go-round and there could be somebody out on the outside of the merry-go-round. The guy in the center is just kind of standing there, and the guy on the outside of the merry-go-round is hanging on for dear life because the further you go out from the center of a, of a circle or a diameter, the faster the speed's going to be. It's called geometric progression. So the larger the journal, the faster the speed is going to be between the bearing and the journal. And... That's why large journal diameter crankshafts are not really conducive to high RPM because it wears the bearing out. So the advantage to the small journal crankshaft is this. You have lower bearing or, or crankshaft speed against your rod bearings and your main bearings and you can twist the motor up a lot higher assuming all the other factors are conducive to high RPMs. You can twist the motor up higher uh, without wiping out your bearings. So there's guys, you know, um, I've seen stock 327s now, stock 327 small journal engines 
with the right cam and head package in them turn 8,000, 9,000 RPMs, no problem. The shorter stroke of the 327 is also more conducive to high RPM because you have less piston speed at a given RPM so you can zing it up higher. So the early 327s, um, they sh actually shared their main and rod journal sizes with a 283, uh, 265, a lot of those early small blocks. The, the 350 engine, basically the first year for that was 1967 and it came out in the Camaro and it was very similar. It was basically the same block. Now here's the thing. You can take any 350 block from any year and there's like billions of them out there on these older 350s and you can get a 327 crank rods and pistons and you can just put it together and you got yourself a 327. So you know they're, they're pretty much interchangeable from 68 on up. The thing about the 327 is now this is a large journal 327 in 1969 these are actually pretty rare nowadays, and the reason being is they only made them for two years. The, the 327 went away after 1969. GM just decided, you know what, we got the 350. Why build a 327 out of 350? Let's just go with the 350. So the 350 kind of took over as the staple of, you know, the small block world in, in, in 1970. And all the way up and they're still making the LS version of what they call a small block now so you, you know they, they, they've been around there's a lot of those around the other issue that a lot of guys want to know is there they ask me say hey you know what are you gonna do a 400 build you know uh, small block 400 is a very similar block to this but again they made a change in the main journal size now, the rod journals on the small block 400 stayed the same. They were 2 inch 100. But the 400 went with a yet a larger journal diameter main here. And so uh, it was a little bit different animal. Now, they, they only made the 400 for 10 years. It came out in 1970. It had a Siamese cylinder. It had a big, a big bore, bigger, bigger than a 4 inch bore. Um, and it had a three and three quarter inch or 3.750 stroke and it was a real torque monster let me tell you but it did have some issues with overheating and they didn't make as many of those there there's not nearly as many of those around in fact finding a 400 block today an early 400 even though they made it for 10 years they 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 put it in um, the big impalas and the caprices and there's it was in quite a few cars in the 70s uh, up until like 76 and 76 it went away as far as the cars go but it still survived for three or four more years up until like 79 or 80 in trucks but you know it was one engine option of a bunch you know you could get everything from a six cylinder a 250 straight six all the way up to you know a 454 so the 400 was just one in engine option and only for about three or four years so you know there wasn't a lot of those made there was some out there but there 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 wasn't the sheer numbers of that thing like we have with the, the 350 so hopefully that kind of clears some of this up because I get a lot of people that say you know hey I've got a 327 and and I was wondering if I could you know put my 350 crank in it it's a 1965 327 and then I got other guys that like, hey, I got a 69 327. Can I destroke it with a 283 crank? You know, no, not, a lot of those are not interchangeable. So keep in mind, there's a split there. Everything before 68, as far as 327s goes, was a small journal and it was compatible with the same uh, cr uh, main size and so forth as the 283 and the 265. They were all kind of the same. In 68, the 327, went to the 350 journal size and so they were interchangeable with the 350 but not with the small journal stuff. So I hope that clears that up. The thing is if you're going to build a street motor and you're looking for a 327, um, the small journal 327s are out there but they are, keep in mind they're very different. 
So the parts are probably a little more expensive and they don't use the same rod and main bearings and all that as as these, you know, the, the later version of the 327 and 350. Because a lot of people, you know, they, 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 oh, I got a, I got a 327, you know, this is just a really special motor. Um, no, basically it's a 350 with a shorter stroke. If you got a 68 or 69 327, which that's what a lot of, most of them are, are, that are being built out there today, it's just basically the same thing as a 350, just with a shorter stroke and a little different components. But the block is 100% interchangeable with 350 parts, and you can you can build it if you have a blown up 327 that has a bad crank or bad pistons or something. You could just buy a 350 rotating assembly, slam it in there, and you're good to go, man. It's the same exact block. The casting numbers are different, and that's one uh, other issue is. If you do have a 68 or a 69 car that you want a numbers matching 327, the 327 block, even though it was almost exactly the same block, it has a different casting number on it. So if you want it numbers matching, you really can't take a 350 block, put a 327 rotating assembly in it. I mean, you can do that, but it's going to be a 350 casting number. They're, they, they were not the same. So. Um, if you actually have a true 327 block like this one with a 327 casting number, you got a you got a pretty rare piece, especially if you have an error correct car. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this helps you guys. I will see you soon. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, be sure to support this channel. I'm looking for people to give a monthly pledge at my patron site. The address is down here. I got some cool giveaways coming up. I'm going to give away a cam kit coming up here next week. I'm giving away cylinder heads. I'm giving away tools. There's all kinds of stuff coming up. So sign up. I'm not asking for a lot of money. Just send me, uh, you know, pledge a dollar, ten dollars, whatever, whatever you feel like pledging. The more support I get, the cooler builds we have. I actually have a 6.0 LS block in the back of my truck right now. Now, we're not going to do a full build on that, but we are going to bore it and make it a 6.2 liters for a customer. So stay tuned. That's coming up. I appreciate you watching, and you have a great day.